Hello and welcome to day 25 of this book, Frameworks Volume 3, Jesus. We're on day 25. We've been following the life, uh, the events of Jesus leading up to the cross uh, on day 24, thinking about those final words, it is finished. And here on day 25, picking up the events just after Jesus' resurrection. On that first Easter day, as Jesus breaks through the tomb, rises from the dead, and he meets in John chapter 20, uh, Mary Magdalene. And we're thinking about Jesus, the gardener, the gardener. Because I wonder how you imagine Jesus looked. Uh, what would you have seen as you looked at Jesus on that first Easter day? Would he have been glowing? Uh, some modern paintings kind of portray Jesus in this otherworldly, floaty existence, maybe slightly uh, you know, transparent and you can see through him a glowing halo and all that. Well, when Mary Magdalene, the first person here recorded in John's Gospel, to see him, uh, when Mary sees him, what does she see? Thinking he was the gardener. I'm not quite sure exactly what made her think that he was a gardener. Maybe he had tools, maybe it was the, the clothes he was wearing. What was it about him that made him look like the gardener? And why would that make sense of the risen Lord Jesus? Well, let's think forward and let's think backwards a little bit. What do you imagine our life in heaven will be like? What will that resurrected, eternal and everlasting life look like? So often the picture is painted uh, of us floating around on clouds, thinking heavenly thoughts, kind of just kind of, I don't know, existing, uh, bubbling along happily without any real engagement with life in the world. Whereas Jesus shows us you know, the resurrected life is a very physical one. It's a practical one. It is one whereby we engage with the very uh, things of nature. It is a lived life. And to understand that, well, we've got to go backwards, go all the way back to the beginning. What did God make the world for? What is the purpose of this world? Why do we have flowers and mountains and birds and animals, caves and lakes and sunsets and sunrises? Why can we dig down and find metals and gems and jewels? What do we do with all these things around us? Well, we do what humans have always been doing. We create we take the things that we have around us that God has put in this world and we do something with it. We're to build great bridges and railway stations, make computers and football stadiums, uh, paintings and poetry, novels and operas, uh, make recipes for food and drinks and delightful things to enjoy. We are to enjoy this world which God has created using the resources God has put at our disposal. And that's what we see the Lord Jesus doing at the very beginning. What does he do? He plants a garden, the garden of God, the garden of Eden. Perhaps he dug holes and planted trees. Maybe he had raised flower beds. He had mowed lawns. It would have been an incredible place to be. And that's where he placed Adam and Eve at the very center of uh, this wonderful world that he had created. He didn't just want Adam and Eve to sit around and kind of watch the world go by, but wanted Adam and Eve to join in with his work of subduing and of uh, being involved with uh, organizing and uh, taking hold of creation and making it, uh, uh, remaking it in other ways. And so it is with the eternal and resurrected life. As Mary meets with Jesus, she finds that he's like this gardener finally able to return to not not the work of redemption that, that's finished it's all just a matter of waiting now but he's beginning that eternal and resurrected life of going back to that original work for which we were created to be a gardener to take hold of this creation and all the resources in it and to do something with it and that's the invitation uh, to us <laughs> jesus is there waiting ready to, to put his tools to work again, to subdue and to, to garden this world. And our eternal resurrected hope is not that we'll be uh, floaty spirits, uh, kind of bouncing around along the clouds, uh, singing songs, although we will be singing, but that's not all we'll be doing. We'll be planting, we'll be being creative, we'll be creating, we'll be making, we'll be reshaping, we'll be 
uh, uh, discovering, inventing all these wonderful things that humans have been doing uh, for hundreds and hundreds, for thousands of years. But this time, in the resurrected life, we will do it all with perfect minds and hearts, done for the glory of the risen Lord, working alongside Jesus, the gardener.